The Great Salt Lake is close to its historic low water level. Water levels at the Great Salt Lake are lower than they've been in recent memory. Great Salt Lake is a huge stopover area for migrating birds. There are millions of birds that come here every year to feed before they migrate. Great Salt Lake is about four to five times saltier than the ocean. So it's not just ocean salty, it's really salty. And so there's not a lot of things that can live in that. So for instance, that's why there's no fish in Great Salt Lake, because it's too salty for fish. In the main part of the lake, there's only two kinds of invertebrates. There's brine flies and brine shrimp. Because you've only got those two things, they're not competing with all these other different species. There are a lot of them. It's a really abundant prey resource. And that's why there's so many migratory birds that come here this time of year, because they're either eating brine shrimp or they're eating brine flies. Phalaropes are here at Great Salt Lake to fuel up before they migrate all the way to South America. For a very small bird, that's a really long way to fly, so it's important that they come here and eat before they go all the way down there. There are more phalaropes here at one given time than you'll find anywhere else. More than a third of the total Wilson phalarope population in the world is relying on Great Salt Lake. Some of the biggest flocks may be up to 100,000 birds all in one flock. It kind of looks like they're swimming in the sky more than flying because they all move together in a fluid movement that's maybe like a ribbon or it's also been described as smoke. It kind of looks like they're dancing. With the lower levels of Great Salt Lake, we don't entirely know how big of an impact that will have on different birds that use this area. When there's less water in the lake, it concentrates all of the minerals that are left, and so we get a saltier lake. How is salinity affecting the invertebrates, and how is that indirectly affecting the phalarope populations? So it's resting on the bottom right now, and then I pull it straight up and capture whatever invertebrates were above it. When we look at the amount of brine shrimp at one site, we can compare that to the amount of brine shrimp at another site and then look at salinity differences between those sites. How does salinity affect how many invertebrates are in any given location? This is just commercial fly paper that we use that they stick to really well. If we see fewer invertebrates as salinity increases, then that means that you're affecting what invertebrate prey can live there. Consequently, when you have different amounts of invertebrates in one place, we think that that's then affecting what birds are using those areas and how much they're using those areas. We're comparing sites where there are lots of phalaropes and sites where there aren't any phalaropes. And we're saying, why are the phalaropes here? Why are they not over there? Another part of that is, what are the phalaropes doing while they're there? So for instance, if there's not a lot of prey, that might be okay if they're only using that area for resting. In addition to all of the birds that rely on this lake, there's a large human population that also relies on all of the water coming into Great Salt Lake. Great Salt Lake itself does not have water rights. So it only gets whatever water from the rivers that people aren't using. And that's compounded by the fact that when there's a drought, people are taking out even more water. I think we do have water resources that are out here that can be used by both people and wildlife. I think we just need to really think about ways that we can conserve water so that we can be here and continue to have wildlife here.